Welcome to lesson two of the Learning PHP tutorial series. Uh, Macrodinic is my name, your your host, your teacher, your guide for this uh, hopefully uh, fun journey. And today we're going to be talking about um, PHP, uh, the stream, the PHP lifecycle, and we're going to talk about strings and numbers and a couple of the uh, curiosities of working with those. So. As you may recall, as we left off from the last lesson, we installed our web server, and we now have a server name called YT. And then we added this PHP info block here, which is essentially a command to print out all the information about our current PHP install. And this is a perfect way to talk about the PHP lifecycle and the PHP stream, as I call it. And that is to say that this page right here, this index.php, Right now, it's just outputting this essentially pre-configured output from my version of PHP here. Though I can do something like this. I can say hi in front of it. I can save this file, and then I can hit F5 to refresh. And now I have the, the word hi above my PHP uh, information here. Conversely, I can add a second hi with an exclamation point, save my file, refresh. And now if I hit the N key to go all the way to the bottom here, you can see that here's my high with the exclamation point. So the PHP lifecycle and the PHP stream, for my money, essentially means that when I have a file, in this case in my htdocsyt folder here, with the PHP extension, Apache, our web server, gives that file to the PHP interpreter. The PHP interpreter then says, oh, okay, I got some text high here. Well, I'm just going to spit that out. Oh, okay, here's a what we call PHP open block. Well, that means I, the PHP interpreter, have some work to do. I'm going to go through and I'm going to figure out what commands are in here. And in this case, it's PHP info, which again spits this out. And it does that, and it spits that out to the stream of content that's being created. Remember, the stream started with high. It now has a bunch of this information. The PHP interpreter then sees the closing PHP block, this question mark in the greater than sign, or that be less than, whatever. Um, and then it sees the second high. So the stream is high, a bunch of PHP information here, and then a second high. When it's done processing that, it gives the page back to Apache, and then Apache gives it to our web browser. And so we have this stream of content that happens in essentially the PHP lifecycle. Our job then, as PHP developers, is doing interesting things in our PHP blocks. Though that's not to say, this is really important, that we need PHP in our page at all. Uh, hopefully this goes without saying, but I can actually X that out, save my page, and now when I refresh, I'm just going to get my two highs. Right? So just because the page has .php, and it's technically a PHP page, doesn't mean it needs PHP. Though, generally speaking, if we're developing PHP, there's not a good reason to not have that. So we will, of course, have PHP. So then our job uh, then breaks down into, well, what do we do in between our PHP open and close block? Well, we write PHP code, and that's what we dive into right now. So we're going to talk about the two main data formats for PHP, the string and the integer. Or perhaps we can say strings and non-strings. Because uh, integers can be floating points as well, uh, as, as far as the PHP outstream goes. But the quickest way to do that is to say echo. And so I'm going to write as a short PHP statement here, which says echo, the number one. Notice I've got a space here. Echo a space, the number one, and then a semicolon. And what this is going to do is it's going to, whoops, this is going to output the number one to our browser. So echo can also be written as print. Print perhaps makes a little bit more sense. But echo, for some reason for me, that's always made sense as well. It's like echoing is saying something. And so echo is your very first PHP uh, 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 programming language construct. Echo a space followed by some content. And this content can be the number one or the number two. Or it can be a string. So this concept of echoing right here, 
then takes us into what is the difference between strings and numbers. When it comes to numbers, whether it's floating point, like 3.2, or just a scalar, like 3, there's not a whole lot going on here. It's just echo, a space, and then the number that we want. With strings, as we saw, we have quotes. And quotes come in two varieties. We have the single quotes, or we have the double quotes. They do the exact same thing in terms of what PHP does for output. It says it's a string, so it puts it, uh, the string out there uh, in our, our stream of content, and then it shows up in our web browser window. What's important to note, though, is that unlike numbers, which don't require quotes, uh, strings very much do need quotes around them. If we don't, of course, we get an error. And so whether we use the single or double quotes really comes down to how do we want to use the string. And by that I mean, let's say, for example, that I have the single quotes here. So, hey, printing on a string is fine. But then I have um, plural strings like that, right? Possessive plural, I think that would be. Not even this guy, I'm a programmer. I think that's right. Uh, we get an error. Why? The error is unexpected T string. And gives us some gibberish here. The problem is, this isn't a very, unfortunately, very helpful uh, error message here. The problem is, is that we have, if we think about it, an opening tick mark here, opening quote, which then tells PHP, okay, so I got a string. It reads all the way through the G here, and then it gets a closing quote mark. So it says, okay, well, my string is the word string. Then all of a sudden it gets an S again. And that's where it's an unexpected T string. Because it says, well, I don't know what this S is here. This isn't a function. I, I don't know what this is. And so one of the ways, or one of the reasons why we have single quotes and double quotes is that that's how we solve that problem. So if I know that I need a single quote within a string, I can just wrap the string in double quotes instead. And now my string prints fine. Conversely, if I need to have double quotes around something, and I have something like his name was Jack, if I have single quotes and then this double quoted string in here, it's going to print out fine. But if I had double quotes, we're going to get that error again. Because again, once again, PHP reads this through. It sees the end of the string is this. And all of a sudden, it just it gets this jack. It doesn't know how to deal with this. There is a way to deal with this, though. And that is to use an escape character. And the escape character is what I call the backslash. It's right underneath the backspace key. But what we would do is we would escape this. And now when we refresh this, I can have a double quoted string within a main double quoted string, but because I'm escaping this, I'm essentially telling PHP, hey, by the way, this isn't a close to a string. This is just a normal string character. And PHP interprets that then as exactly what I say. It is just now a regular string character. It doesn't try to process that. There is something somewhat subtle to this. We're going to get this uh, covered when we talk about variables. But there is a difference between whether we use single quotes or double quotes. That's actually pretty important. And that is, just to simply say for now, the double quotes are like dumb quotes, and double quotes are like smart quotes. In other words, we can't do anything special in the single quotes, but we can do special things like, to be specific, output variables within double quotes. And so when it comes to writing strings, if I want to do something like this, so long as we escape the string, we'll be fine. That is our quote mark here. But there will be times when we need double quotes because of some uh, special requirement that we have. And that's where having the ability to escape these guys and why we would use double quotes comes into play. Again, I know it's a little bit meta right now. We're going to get into that in the next video about uh, variables. There are a few traps when it comes to strings, so. And that is uh, perhaps most easily demonstrated by saying this. 1 plus 1 is going to output 2, right? So we can do addition in our echo statement here. 1 plus 2. Simple enough. Something funny happens when we do this, though. What happens if I try to add a string and a number? It actually works. Just to make sure that you can see how that changed. We can get 8 here. What happens if I try to add two strings? Surely that won't work. 
Yeah, actually, it does. This is one of those things about PHP, and I say that with slight air quotes because it is something that I know for a fact that a lot of programmers don't like. And that is the idea that a string and a number in PHP, in some circumstances, including this one right here, they're the exact same. We can add two strings to create a number. And a lot of guys coming from a C background or Java, etc., don't like this because they feel it's sloppy. And the only problem I have with that is that if we look at the source code for this page, this is text. This, is, this isn't a number. Yes, it is a number in that to our minds is a number. But in terms of HTML, this is simply a 1 and a 6 next to each other. The strings 1 and a 6. In other words, HTML doesn't make a differentiation between numbers and strings. And the idea that PHP doesn't either is, I find, incredibly intuitive. And that's something that hopefully you do as well. I know that when I first started learning PHP, the idea that a number was a string and a string and a number, it just it made sense to me. I don't, I don't want to have to think about whether something is a number or a string. I just want my logic of my application to determine that for me. And I just find this an incredibly natural way of, of, of coding. But it is out there. I, just, I say that just to bring it up, that a lot of people will say, I don't like PHP because it doesn't have uh, strict typing. Um, numbers can be strings, strings can be numbers. It's out there. Um, and it also brings up the idea then, well, what happens if I do something like this? What's going to happen here? Well, we're just going to output the number 10. This is a little bit weird. In other words, we can't actually add the word 1 plus 10, but instead of giving us an error, PHP just outputs the number 10. This may seem a little bit abstract, like why would we even try something like this? But it actually gets interesting when we do something like this, when we're actually dealing with two strings. Because what if I actually want to show, let me actually give a slightly more reasonable thing. What if I want to show 1 plus 2? I could wrap it in a string like this right here. Um, but what if I actually had space? I had some other stuff in between those two. Well, here we're actually going to add these two now. And this gets us to something called concatenation. So if I'm using the plus sign, this is called an operator, and this means I'm going to try to add these two numbers together. Even though they're strings, I'm going to try to add them together. And so instead what we want to do is we want to concatenate the two. And the concatenation is done with the period. And so now when I do this, I'm just going to get a 1 and a 2. Concatenation of numbers is a little bit weird. Sometimes it makes a little bit more sense when I have strings. And even this is a little bit strange, because why wouldn't I just make this one string like this? Why wouldn't I just say 1, 2? Well, the reason why this is relevant is because what happens a lot in PHP is we have some content that we're outputting. We have a 1 and a 2, and we're concatenating it together, but we want a space in between the two. So I would add a space like this, and then using the period, I'm concatenating the two together, and now we get something like this. Again, this is generic because, again, why wouldn't we just say 1 and 2? But imagine this is a stream of uh, HTML code that we're outputting. Then this becomes extremely important because we're joining strings together, concatenating them. And this ability to not try to add things together and do weird things, that's where this concatenation comes in. So maybe another way of saying it is, generally speaking, what we're going to be doing is not using the plus, but instead using the period to join strings together and in, for that matter, numbers as well, if, if, we, if we don't want to add those two together. So that is, that is it for the main lesson. I just want to throw out one other thing, which is something that I was really excited about when I first learned that we could do this, which is that here we've just been outputting numbers and, and strings. Uh, there is nothing that says that I can't do this then. Cool, a div. And we see this, it's a string, but if we look at the source code, whoa, we got a div, right? This is actual valid HTML here. So I could add uh, style information. So I could add background color of, I don't know, a gray. And when I refresh, I get my background color. PHP's echo statement 
And the reason why PHP exists, I would argue, as a language f for doing web stuff, is because we can echo valid HTML. And as we talked about in the beginning video, this stream, the PHP stream, the idea of diving into PHP, doing some stuff, echoing code, whatever, and then jumping back out again, this is why PHP exists as a language, this is why it's useful. It's because in most cases, in real case, we're gonna have a div up here. And I say, hey, cool, a starting div, and I can change its color to something like this. And PHP goes in, it prints out this first one right here. This is static, but then we jump into a PHP block, and as we'll see with variables, we can then actually set dynamic elements. So we can set a username or something like that. And uh, we can then change HTML content using PHP's dynamic processing. And this is just so incredibly important uh, in Parama to how PHP works. And so again, we're gonna look at this in more detail when we get into variables in the next video. But for now, just notice how, how powerful this is to be able to output HTML like this. And hopefully this gets you as excited as I was uh, because hey, this is how we create dynamic content on the web. Is PHP isn't just for outputting strings and numbers, it's for outputting HTML as well. So we shall leave it at that. Uh, again, in the next video, we're going to we're going to take this a step further. We're going to talk about variables, because then variables are how we do some cool things with um, with dynamic content in PHP. So, hope to see you there.